Hi, hello everyone. My name is Srikan. Today we are going to learn flows, also called as visual workflows in Salesforce. We'll go through some real-time scenarios to have a better understanding. By end of this video, you will be able to create your own flows and you will also understand why in the world flows was introduced when we already got workflows, process builders and triggers which does a similar job. Okay, first question. What is a flow? A flow is a tool which automates a business process. Wait, what? Isn't it the same thing workflows and process builder does? Then what is flow for? Okay, the simple answer is flows are very very much advanced than process builders and workflows. And the long answer is we got apex triggers lightning components and lightning web components. With these things we can perform any custom implementation. But there is a downside of it, which is we need to code. One has to know how to code. Let's say I don't know how to code, but still I want to do some kind of implementation. Salesforce has come up with few standard features, out of which first one is workflow. We don't need to code, but we are very limited with workflow. We can perform only four actions. If we need to perform more than that, we cannot actually do it until process builder has come. So process builder has been added into Salesforce lately and it can perform almost 11 actions which is more than workflow does. Okay, but even process builder is limited. So some of the examples are we cannot delete set of records. We cannot uh, do a roll up some custom roll up summary action and we cannot clone a record. So these things process builder cannot handle. So to do that we cannot we can only do with epic triggers lightning and lightning web components until we got a new kid, new smart kid on board, which is flows. Flows are really, really very, very powerful tool. If we understand flows, admins will like it, developers will love it. Okay, so what makes flows so much special? First thing, flows can build UI screens. No other standard tool can do it. So we can build few UI screens where we can add some kind of registration forms and we can do some kind of approval rules as such and it also can perform complex actions like deleting of records cloning of records or we can also perform a custom role of summary actions okay to conclude why flows was introduced is flows can build ui screens that no other standard feature can do and flows can perform very complex actions that process builders and workflow cannot do simple we have two types of flows one is screen flow second one is auto launch flow so how we need to select a flow type okay whenever a custom screen has to be implemented we'll go for screen flow else we will go for auto launch flow examples for screen flow are let's say a requirement comes with uh, we need to display some kind of registration form or we need to create uh, some kind of feedback form we need to uh, have some kind of approval uh, steps over there so these kind of things we need to go for screen flow okay we'll go ahead now flows are really hey who are you hi i am cuboy i need your help in finding solutions for my requirement please help me and one more thing no god yes we are right into that we are going ahead with flows which doesn't involve not even single line of code okay come and join us okay uh, oh you got scenario display hello world text message on home page yeah yeah this is our ancestors method so hello world is our ancestors method to start learning any technology so as a token of respect to them we'll go ahead and try to create a simple flow to display a hello world message let's go okay as per our cute little boys requirement we need to display a hello world message on uh, a home page so I'm just opening any application so say this application here so when an application is loaded, we will be seeing the home screen of it. So Cuboy want, wants us to display a hello world message on this home screen. So we'll try to display our message somewhere here on top of this assistant box. So how to do it? Okay, we need to go to setup first and search for flows in quick find. Quick find flows. Flows? Flows. Yeah, flows. It will take us to the flow screen. So this here we should be seeing list of flows currently we don't have any so click on new flow it will take us to the flow builder page where we need to select flow type so as I have mentioned earlier 
to select the flow type we need to decide whether we need to display some kind of uh, screen to user so in our case we need to display a hello world message to user that is the reason we will select screen flow in any other case if we don't want to show anything to user then we need to select auto launch flow we'll come to that later so for now we'll select screen flow and click on create now these are the things that it will be available so here we need to add our elements to display a message so to display any kind of message to display anything to user we need to drag and drop the screen to our uh, working area now we have three things here we have header we have body and we have footer uh, so this is the screen that user will be seeing currently we don't want header or footer so we'll take them out how so if in the right panel if you see there is show header and footer uncheck them see now uh, we have only the body uh, first give some screen name here message screen okay now we need to get our body so we need to display some message if you see this is input so these are basically expecting some input from user we don't want any input fields we want to display a text to user now what kind of text we need to display hello world and good day something like good day yeah and uh, this looks too mainstream i want to make it bold and size 220 yeah this looks good so if i scroll up i, I need to give some api name to this text okay and scroll down and click on done okay now we have our message screen ready with a hard-coded text with hello world message so we need to connect with start only then our element will be called or our screen will be called now we need to click on save we need to give some name to our flow so here i will be giving greeting screen flow yeah so by uh, here our screen flow was selected here directly and click on save so after clicking on save there are a couple of warnings so ignore them for now and if you see the flow is act inactive now so we need to make it active but you don't see any buttons here we cannot make a flow active in this flow builder screen remember this we need to active activate it in flow detail page flow detail page so it will take us to the flow detail page where we would be seeing this flow click on flow so it will take us to the flow detail page this is our flow detail page now we have our uh, version ready whenever you create a new flow a version will be created uh, with uh, in deactive status click on activate now we are done with our step one we have completed our screen flow so our flow is ready to display in home page so how to add our flow to our uh, home page so go to the page layout which you want where you want to add our flow so this is our home page layout right we want our flow to be displayed here so to do that click on this setup button and click on edit page remember this is same for any layout if you want to add this message to account page layout you need to go to the account page layout and click on uh, edit page then you would be seeing all the current components of that page now in the left side panel you would be seeing this flow just drag and drop here on top of this assistant component now we have our flow and if you see in the right side panel we have our uh, flow selected by default because we have only one it's selected by default if there are more than one you need to manually select it now click on save and it asks for activate just agree to whatever it asks and assign as all default for now and then click on save yeah and go back to home page to see if our message is displaying or not look hello world and good day so this is how you need to you can create a simple flow and you can add a flow to any layout very simple okay with this scenario we learned how to create a simple flow which displays a simple message and how to add that flow to any layout so the process is same for any layout okay now we go for scenario 2 display a login username and greeting message that we created in scenario 1 sure with our previous scenario we learned the basics of uh, flows how to create a simple screen flow and how to add that flow to a layout now with the second scenario cuboy wants us to display a logged in username here instead of hello world it should display the logged in username in our case it should display hello shrikant here okay now to display a logged in username we will go back to the same flow and click on open so if you click on open only then it will take us to the flow builder page now we have our message screen click on it 
now this is the uh, message that we are displaying now but instead of world it should take the value dynamically in the sense whoever logs in they should see their name how so salesforce already provides some kind of global variables something like uh, flow or user something like that anything if you see with dollar or basically global variables so flow global variables has a couple of uh, uh, variables that we can use formulas that we can use but uh, you see current date date time etc etc but user variable is not one of them username we cannot get it directly but there is a global variable for user how to get it so if there is a global variable and if you are if it is not available for us we can create a formula for it how so that is something we'll create it now so click on new resource to create a formula field click on resource type to formula and the data type to text and a name to current logged in user name okay now in resource if you see there are multiple global variables flow api organization profile system and user and user role anything that starts with dollar is a global variable i will scroll down again i will click on user and i will search for last name yeah user dot last name so this is a global variable which gets current logged in last name current logged in users last name so click on done and now here select this world and delete it and search for our formula current logged in username and then add it down here so hello current logged in username and good day anything within this uh, curly braces will is basically a dynamic uh, formula which will get the value now click on done and uh, this is an active state but we need to click on save as to save our version uh, new current logged in user and click on save now it is in active status to make it active we'll go back to the close detail page and then activate it so that's how you need to activate every time you edit it a new version will be created every time you edit it so this is our first version which is having hello world this is our second version where it is having our current logged in user logic now click on activate now we have our flow ready to go so we'll just already this flow has been already added we just need to refresh this page to see the change refresh and it should display my name come on yeah here we go hello shrikant and good day okay here is the tip always give meaningful names to flows elements as if the person who maintains your flows will be a violent psychopath who knows where you live i am really sure you really don't want to be in his hit list so always try to give meaningful names so that even in in your future if you want to go back to your flow and do some updates you will understand why you have made that change in your previous version okay let's go ahead with the next scenario display a new contact page on account page this should take first name last name email as inputs from user so this is basically create a quick contact from account page itself okay sure thing okay if you understand the previous scenarios properly you can throw your beginner tag now because with the current scenario we'll be going through the intermediate level okay now we'll talk about the scenario that qby has given so he wants us to display a quick contact page let me open a simple account now okay this account so qboy wants us to uh, display simple uh, box here something like a quick contact box where user can enter first name last name and email as such and click on save and it should create a contact that's what his expectation is so how to achieve it so we need to create a flow again so to do that go to flow and uh, go to list flows yeah and now scroll down click on new flow and now it will be taking us to this flow type so we need to set a screen flow again why because we need to display the input fields or quick contact creation so click on create so as or as you already have guessed we need to get our screen because we need to display something to user okay we'll talk about this header and footer for now we'll get all of our uh, input fields so we need to uh, user has to type some input text for first name last name and uh, email so to do that we need to get our input comments here so i will get all of them as text first name this is for first name this is for last name 
and third one for email and I will name each one of them first name last name and email we can make them required here uh, something like this so whenever you create these input uh, screens, Salesforce will create respective variables over there. We'll come to that if you even though if you don't understand, don't worry about it. We'll discuss about that. Now we don't want all these three buttons. We still want footer because user needs to click on finish or next so that he can create this contact. So we need all the buttons, but we don't. Uh, we need only finish button. We don't want pause and previous. How to take them out? So there is a control navigation here. Uncheck these two things and you will be having only finish method now uh, we need to change the flow label that will be automatically changed if you give the uh, screen name here we'll make it as quick contact yeah and yeah i think that's all here yeah for email even you can use uh, email input component etc you can also get phone here so for now we'll have only these three fields and click on done i think we are done with our quick contact screen and connect with start and you know what we need to click on save make it as quick contact screen flow new screen simple and screen flow is selected by default click on save now we have our flow ready uh, it's an inactive status we need to make it status by going to flow detail page so it is taking us to the list list of flows page now we need to navigate to our respective flow click on that it will take us to the flow detail page scroll down and new version will be created whenever a new flow is created and click on activate now we have our flow ready so what is this step two we need to go to that respective page to add our flow how it's the same method that we have done in uh, the previous scenario click on this and click on edit page so that it will open the respective page with all the existing components we need to get our flow so in the left panel scroll down to get flow to add any flow we need to get the flow component so which flow is something we, we need to select it how okay we got our flow now in the right side panel if you see fl greeting flow is selected by default but we want our quick contact screen flow okay now click on save it will ask for us to activate click on activate and assign it as or default click on next save now go back to our account page to see whether our quick contact page has been reflected here. Yeah, actually we don't. We should have taken this award over there. Okay, we'll take it later. Now first name, last name and email. I will give some values here. Something like Vegi, Shrikant, Vegi dot Shrikant at the rate test.com and click on finish. And you know what? Contact will not be created. Why? Why? Because we haven't written any logic over there. We just created a screen flow with three elements. So finish will not do any job over there. Our flow ends up with that screen. We need to insert that contact. So that is something which we are missing now. Okay. With this scenario, we learned how to add input elements in the screen flow. Similarly, we, we can put a phone fields or uh, check boxes or radio buttons, etc, etc. Okay. We'll go ahead with our next scenario. This page is not creating contact, of course. Contact should be created when user clicks on finish button. Okay, whenever user enters first name, last name and email and click on finish, we should insert contact record into the database. So how to do it? We'll go back to our flows and we'll check it. Click on open, which will take us to the flow builder page. And this is our screen where we got first name, last name and email. So we have this button on clicking on this finish it should insert records finish button will not do the actual job the only job of this finish is it will take us to the next screen let's say we add another element another screen here another element here then it will be called so this element whatever element that we are going to add should insert contacts that's how we need to add so if you see in the left panel you have create records you have update records, you have get records and delete records. So to perform any kind of DML operation, we need to get one of these elements. In our case, we need to insert records. That's the reason we got create records element. Now we'll give some label name, insert contact and 
how many records we are going to insert so user provides only first name last name and domain we are going to create only one now how to set the record fields fields in the sense contact fields for contact we have many fields out of which we are setting only first name last name and email so how these variables are getting from we are getting from screen variable screen data so screen data will be stored in resources so that is the reason we need to select this use separate variables or resources or little values all the screen variables that we give to the ui will be stored in resources will come to that so as the screen variable is stored in resources we are checking this now create a record for this object which object of course it is contact now we need to map the fields so contact has first name contact so first name has to be associated with the value that we enter on entered on uh, screen so we have screen elements out of which we have given see under screen elements i find first name in the same way contact last name should be mapped with screen elements last name if i scroll down screen elements here yeah. so screen elements we have email screen co underscore screen comments we have email sorry email last name and first name so i will add one more which is email and if i search for email here so under screen comments i have email click on it now whatever user entered or stored in first name last name and email we are trying to map we are trying to map to the contact record first name last name and email and finally they will be inserted so once it is in inserted it is asking store contact id in a variable so once a contact is inserted it will generate a salesforce id something with 15 digit id uh, this is accounted basically contact id will be with 003 so that id it is asking whether i want to store that variable somewhere but really we don't want it here in our scenario so we'll ignore that now and click on done now we have our insert contact this insert contact will be called after user clicks on finish so in the screen we have finish button that finish button uh, whenever user clicks on that finish button it will call this insert contact insert contact is having the mapping so user enter first name last name and email will be uh, mapped to the respect to contact fields so we have our flow ready so we need to click on save as and we'll take this off so that it will display only three contacts yeah flow label is the one which will be displayed on the screen header now i will change this value remember that psychopath uh, terminology over there so you need to give proper descriptions here so that you will understand in the later stages added insert logic okay this is enough click on save and go back so it's inactive we need to make it active of course go back to see our uh, flows list also flow detail page and if you see this is our second version which is having added insert uh, added insert logic and click on activate now our flow is ready completely ready we already have our account page just refresh it we should be seeing our quick contact yeah this is only quick contact i have removed the screen for it that's the reason it's not appearing now we'll try to give some values uh, some name here and then see if it is creating now test.com and click on next finish i mean sometimes it displays next uh, because there is an element over there so we have a contact is created but why it is not displaying here let me see if it is created in the first place we'll go go to the contacts tab and if you see there should be an uh, a contact created vegi shrikan but why it is not displaying under account because we have mapped so for a contact to be mapped with an account we should be having account id of that contact should be populated let's say i open this contact and i see first name and i see first name last name here along with email id but i haven't associated that account i haven't mapped in the first place that's the reason it is not displaying here with this scenario we learned how to create a record from screen form in the same way we can create any custom object record and any standard object record okay we'll go through the next scenario scenario 5 contact is getting created but how to associate with the account okay so to create a contact and associate with an account we need to have the account id of this uh, account how to do it so in this page we have added our flow and we have our account id account here so there should be a way and there is a way that this page can send its account id 
to this flow so that flow will be having access to that id and we can map that field to the respective flow how so that is something we'll look into it now so we'll go back to the same flow and click on open and it will take us to the flow builder page where we will open our mapping now if you see if you scroll down we have three mappings first name last name and email so which has been entered by user but account id is something which user will not enter but our page layout or salesforce page layout has an option to send its account id its id to this flow so let's say let's assume that it is sending the value and we are storing it in some variable so we'll create a variable to hold that value so we'll create a simple variable saying record id always give this uh, same name whenever you want a value to be passed from page layout to a flow so we'll create a record id and type is text and and remember mark this active always available for input is something which tells salesforce okay there is a variable called record id which is waiting for your input so you need to select available for your input only then we can make this work now we have our variable and we'll go for we'll go to the mapping yeah and give that variable here where is it where is it where is it record id yeah our record id so we are mapping a record id value to that account id currently record id doesn't hold any value we'll wait we'll wait and see how it works click on done and save as so rest of it is same uh, user will enter three values first name last name and email and it will go to this page and it will map all those three fields along with record id currently record id is empty remember record id doesn't have any value and click on save as and associating account id with contact and click on save go back and we need to make it active scroll down and make it active this is our third one the last version now so how to send that value how to send this account record id value to this flow so click on edit page again this is something interesting which we haven't seen before and if you see we'll click on the flow we need to click on the flow to see the magic scroll down and this is something which was not there before and it has been appeared magically how you have created a variable with record id and make it available for input available for input has changed the equation and has got this so which says pass record id into this variable which variable this is our variable that we have created in our flow this record id record id check this and this is the record dot id which is this uh, account record id account record ID, account record id will be this one and we are trying to pass that value to a variable you and from there the mapping happens in our flow along with first name last name and email our mapping will work with account id as well and a contact will be created and it should associate with our account we'll test this refresh this page and we have our screen give some values i will give test contact one test contact one at the rate test.com and try to give different values i have created vague history count earlier now i'm giving different values why because there is already a default duplicate check so if you give it there will be an error displayed so click on next and you see a new contact has been created hola with this scenario we learned how to pass record id from record page to flow we send an account id from the record page to the flow so that flow uh, has taken the id and then associated with the contact scenario six yay uh, but contact should not be created if there is any duplicate contact found how to do this okay quite simple okay first we'll see how salesforce duplication works so i will give same test contact one again and test contact one at the rate test.com and if i click on next it will give this kind of weird error salesforce those cute little boys in salesforce theme hasn't fixed this yet so it still shows this kind of vague message will not understand what exactly it means so we need to we need to write our own logic to uh, to create contact only when there is no duplicate value so how 
So we will go back to our flows again and click on open, same drill, and it will take us to the flows page, sorry, flows builder page. And user enters create first name, last name, and the email here, and we are directly inserting it. So between user, I mean, after user enters and before uh, we insert the record, we need to check if there is any duplicate, I mean, if there is any contact which is having same first name, last name, and email. If there is any, we shouldn't insert it. If there is, if uh, there is a contact, if, is, if there is already duplicate value, we will leave it there itself. So we need to write our, uh, add our elements here to find the duplicates. How we will find? We need to query it. Query it means we need to get the existing records. So we'll take this connection in the first place because we need to add a couple of components here. It's an easy process. Get get records here. So what we need to get? Get duplicate contact. Yeah, and if I scroll down, it's asking for which object. Of course, it is contact. Click on contact and scroll down. On what condition? On what condition you are asking me? I mean, what contacts I need to get it? It is asking what contacts I should get it. So we are asking if first name matches with my screen element first name. So user is giving some first name here. We are just putting in for a screen. So last name equals screen last name the value entered on the screen and email of contact matches with whatever user has entered on screen email now we are we have given condition something like select the contact records which are mapping with screens entered first name uh, screen entered last name and user entered uh, email id on the screen now if we scroll down it is asking whether we need to get only the first record of course one record if we get one record itself it says okay there is at least one duplicate record so we will leave this option where to store this uh, field values so we are asking to store the record variable example uh, if a contact record has been uh, queried we need to store that variable somewhere so I will create a variable to store that duplicate uh, contact click on variable and I say uh, duplicate contact and make it type record we don't we are not uh, taking it as input and output so leave these values and object contact of course this is object contact object click 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 yeah this one okay now click on done scroll down and give that value to be get contact okay now if you see it is asking uh, what are the fields I need to store it in that variable. ID itself is enough. We don't need to worry about anything else. And you see this is really important in our case. Check this. So when no records are returned, set specified variables to none. Which means if the, if we run this query with uh, getting all the contacts which are mapping with your first name, last name and email, store that in this variable. If it is not found, let's say there is no contact with your given first name and last name and email ID, give this mark this value with null, with null. So which means if there is value null in this uh, record variable, which means there is no duplicate in the first place. If there is a value in this duplicate contact, that means there is a duplicate value. Very simple. So this is really important because in the next step we are using this. So click on done. So we got our duplicate contact. So after quick contact screen, we are there, we are querying the uh, contact object to see if there is any duplicate. So if there is any duplicate, it will be stored in this variable duplicate contact variable. Now we will we need to insert contact only when the uh, when there is no duplicate. So we need to have an if else if else condition. So to have if else condition, we need to have this decision box. We'll say no duplicates or duplicate contact found okay so to may we will have if else condition so to that we will say yes duplicate contact will have some value when a query returns at least one record now we'll say duplicate contact is null is false is null is false which means duplicate contact is not null yes which means there is a duplicate value we'll may make it as no again which means we'll also give duplicate contact condition says is null 
true. So if this condition matches, sorry, this one, yeah, if duplicate contact is null, which means there is no duplicate in the first place. Duplicate contact is null, which means there is no duplicate in the system. So we'll click on done. Now we'll connect this to our decision box. So once our query returns some value, we are uh, checking uh, we are actually taking if else condition. Now we we will connect this to our insert record. When it should insert record, if duplicate is if duplicate is not found, click on no. Done. Now if you see duplicate contact found, if there is no duplicate found, which is no, then we are inserting it. So we'll just discuss uh, what we have done so far. User will enter some values, so first name, last name, and email here. And with those three values, we are querying if there is any existing record, and we are storing it in duplicate contact variable. If the duplicate contact variable is null, then we are saving it in, we are creating the record. Else, we are leaving it as it is. Very simple. We'll click on save as to save this version. And do check. Click on save. Now we have our flow ready. We'll test this out. Refresh this page. Did we make it active? No, not yet. So go back to our flow. Scroll down to see our flow page. Scroll down and make it active. So we have our flow ready now. We'll go to our account page, refresh it again, and we'll see whether dupe check is working as expected. So first we'll create uh, a simple record which is having a different value test contact 2 test contact 2 at the rate test.com so I'm giving a different value which means there, is, there shouldn't be any uh, contact with the same name so it should create it under the same account click on next so if you see contact 2 has been created under this name now I will give the same details test contact 2 again and it should not create any uh, contact now or it should not even give any error because we haven't added any error logic over there So test test contact to enter we are trying to replicate the same contact and it should not give any error and at the same time it should not uh, Create it so it hasn't been created With this scenario we learned how to query records by using get operation and we also learned how to add decision box Okay, we'll go through the next scenario uh, thank you, but can we display contact created or duplicate contact found messages after user clicks on finish? Of course, yes. Yes, as Cuba said, we really need messages here. Whenever a contact has been created, it should display that. And if there is a duplicate found, it should display that kind of message over there. So how to do it? So this is very similar to scenario 1 where we have displayed hello world message. In the same way, we'll add our own messages here once we inserted a record so how to do it same drill get our screen and add it here and uh, we don't need header we need footer of course we'll come to that but we really don't want previous and pause buttons we will oh not this previous and pause and we have to display our message which is we'll scroll down scroll down and get our display text and we need to add contact inserted success lead. Oh. And AP name is uh, success message. Okay. And we'll make it bold. To do that, select it. Bold and 20. Yeah. And click on done. Oh. We need to click on screen. Give some name here, uh, success screen, and click on done. So we have our message ready and it should be called after insert. Now, once a contact has been inserted, our message will be called where it displays contact inserted successfully. Let's say there is a duplicate found, duplicate found, then we will display another message saying that duplicate contact exists. So same drill, remove the header first and in footer I really don't want pause and previous. So scroll down and get up display text and mark it as 
point duplicate contact font and display dupe error and scroll down select everything bold 20 scroll down and make it yeah and we need to give the name for screen as well uh, dupe check so dupe screen and scroll down scroll down then click on that yeah and outcome is yes of course so if duplicate contact found if yes then it will show this duplicate screen where we are displaying duplicate found and if duplicate is not found duplicate is not found it will insert the record and finally it will go for uh, the success display screen so this and this are last elements in this flow either this will go one two three four and five or else it will go for user enters data duplicate uh, if duplicate uh, check and if it is there is no duplicate phone it inserts and then it will display the success screen so one flow and second flow okay having been said that we'll save as and make it as messages added and click on save and one last step go back and we need to activate it we'll go back to the screen scroll down and activate it and if you see i have been adding descriptions to each and every flow version so first we have added new screen and an insert logic associating context so if you add this kind of descriptions you will understand what modification you have done in that update now we'll go to that account and we'll check whether our messages are really getting displayed or not this is our account page we'll test it out we'll create a new contact which is a not a duplicate one test contact 3 test contact 3 the expectation of this is it should create a contact and it should display as a message yeah contact inserted successfully but it is not displaying it why we need to click on finish once only then the operation will be completed and a new contact has been created and the con quick contact screen has retained its page see very easy now we'll give a duplicate value here test contact to yeah and test contact to at the rate test.com and click on next it should give us the error oh boy do we get contact found and click on finish it will retain its page see quite simple with this we have completed the intermediate level module so we have created a quick contact page where it checks for duplicate and if there is no duplicate found it will create a record do we need process builder I understand flows are far advanced then why can't we just leave process builder and workflows behind and only deal with flows yeah I myself said flows are more advanced than workflows and process builder but the answer is we still need process builder why because even though flows are more advanced flows cannot be called directly when a record is inserted or updated unlike process builder so we call flow from process builder which helps us to do complex actions on insert or update of a record example let's say you want to uh, you want to send an email whenever a record is inserted or updated you can directly uh, do it from process builder but this is not the same case with flows i will explain it better with an example okay you cannot directly call flows so let's say i want to do a mass send sending of emails let's say i want to send emails to multiple people at once process builder cannot do so let's say whenever a record is inserted or updated i want to send emails to multiple people i will i will call process builder first let's say whenever account is inserted or updated i will call process builder and from process builder i will call flows where in flows i will write my logic to send emails to multiple people we'll have a scenario cover so that you will understand it better okay i want all contacts should be deleted when account status is updated to inactive is it possible okay this is the perfect scenario to understand why process builders are really needed for our flow so flow cannot be called whenever a record is inserted or updated so first we'll try to understand what flow qman qboy is asking so we'll open any other account so open another account which has as force as force another contact which is having two contacts here 
So these contacts are not related to cases. That is the reason I am picking this account. Okay. Now, Qboy is asking us to delete those two accounts whenever a uh, user changes the value from active to inactive. So active status to no. So if user selects this value no and click on save, both these records has to be deleted. That's what his requirement is. How to do it? So whenever account is inserted or updated, a trigger can be called, a process builder can be called, and a workflow can be called. A flow cannot be called. That is the reason we will leverage process builder uh, ability to call our flow contacts. We'll go to the flows and we'll see how we can create a flow to delete contacts. Okay, scroll up and we will go to our flows and scroll down and click on new flow and it will take us to the flow builder in this scenario we are dealing with a backend logic where we are deleting the contacts we are not showing any custom screen to user and moreover process builder cannot call screen flow it can only call auto launch flow remember process builder cannot can only call auto launch flow so click on create now what is the what is the process that we need to we need to delete the contacts so click get, drag and drop or delete records delete related contacts now we need to specify the condition what contacts we need to delete so first we need to select the object contact and what uh, what condition we need to give here so process builder assume that process builder will send the account id so whenever a record uh, status changes from active to active status changes to no this process builder will send a rec uh, that account ID to this flow. So this flow should delete all the contacts which are matching with the account ID. Now we'll provide the account ID and equals to we'll create a new resource and give a type variable something like account ID and give something to this account ID will be populated from process builder so process builder will send an account id whenever a record accounts record status active status is changed to no so data type should be text and available for input only then process builder can send account id value to this variable done so this basically mean delete contacts delete contacts where account id is equal to the given account id this account id will be sent from process builder so click on done and connect start with deleted contacts and you know what we have done we are done with our flow click on save delete related contacts flow yeah and auto launch uh, flow is selected here click on save it will be in active status we already know go back and make it active so it will take us to the flow page scroll down Click on it and make it active. Now we have our flow ready to go, but we need to have our process builder to call this flow. So we'll create process builder, a new process, process builder. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Now, uh, so for people who never worked on process builder, I have already created a video for it. I am adding a description down here, or you can uh, click on I icon on the right top okay we'll create a simple process builder this should be on account why because whenever account has been updated which means the process has to be on account so I will give an account insert or update Aye. okay scroll down and process starts when record changes record changes it can be whether account is created or updated click on save now we have created a flow we need to select the object i will select account whenever a record is created and edited mostly it will be in edit case so whenever a record is edited we are calling this process builder so on what condition is inactive so even this should be having meaningful uh, names for these elements so that we'll understand it better so what is this condition this condition says active field active field choose pick list value choose from no and click on save so whenever 
account record is inactive which means active field is set to no then we need to delete all the contacts how we are deleting we already created a flow to delete it so we will call an flow from here so this is how you need to call your flow so here it will only show the auto launch but it will not show the screen flow that's the reason we have even though we have created two other flows it is not displaying here so select our flow and then this flow is ex expects flow variable so we have created account id right and it is available for input we, we we need to send the account id value here so field reference so this process builder will have reference to account object completely so this account id in flow should be populated with the account id search for id and you would be saying somewhere down account id and click on choose so flows account id will be populated with the account id that process builder has access to process builder will send the account id only when ac uh, active status is set to no give some name to this action calling delete contact flow and click on save very easy see so on account object when there is an update happens uh, with is inactive whenever active status changes to no we are calling that flow that flow uh, will have the account id from this process builder and that flow will delete the records that we already have created and we need to make it active the same way we are doing that but process builder has an ability to active in the process builder page itself unlike our flow flow is the stub on okay we have our process builder ready and we are set to test okay we have our process builder now we'll open our sales uh, s4's account these are the contacts that do not have any association with cases so i will open the detail page and i will change the status to no active status to no and click on save the expectation is contact should be deleted scroll up and click on related and you see contacts were deleted this is how you need to do it i have a doubt cuboy what kind of name is it who named you cuboy i always tend to ask too many questions to my parents so they named me cuboy well i am not surprised okay guys that's a wrap up if you like the video give a thumbs up and if you want me to make any video on any topic comment down below yeah and finally practice 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 and happy learning bye